Hello and welcome to the first video of the FP2 chapter Complex Numbers. On the screen, a review question from FP1 to get us back into complex numbers thinking. Express this complex number z is equal to minus 4 plus 2i in the form this, which is called the modulus argument form, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument, where we're going to use the principal argument between minus pi and pi. To do this, a quick sketch on an argand diagram has the imaginary axis and the real axis, and we've got minus 4 on the real, 2 on the imaginary, which puts our complex number about here. So the modulus, r, is just using Pythagoras to find this. So we've got square root of minus 4 squared plus 2 squared and that will give us the square root of 20, or 2 root 5. Then we need theta. To find theta, first I'm going to find this one, which I'll call alpha, and then I'll use that to find theta here, measured from the real axis, positive, because it's going counterclockwise. So to do this, I need tan minus 1, of 2 over 4, and that gives me 0 0.4636 dot dot dot, and that is alpha, and to find theta, I need to do pi minus alpha, which gives me 2.6779 dot dot dot, and I'll write that to three decimal places. In radians, 3dp. Now we've got all of the information, we can write the complex number z is equal to 2 root 5 cosine of a really awkward number 2.678 plus i sine of the same number. And there we have it. Next one, solve this equation here. Now remember, if it's z, that implies, but not definitely, it implies that we're going to have complex number solutions. Because it's a second order polynomial, we should have two solutions in total, whether complex or real. So to do this, I'm just going to follow the usual quadratic formula. Got minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 times a times c, that gives me 4 times 14, 56, all divided by 2. And this will give minus 3 plus or minus the square root of minus 47, divided by 2, and that is as simple as we can make that. So I'll split off my two results. I've got minus 3 over 2 plus root of 47 over 2i, where I've square rooted the minus to make it into an i and pulled that out and then split my real and imaginary parts like so. Second one is the conjugate of this, so it's almost exactly the same, but we've got a minus root 47 over 2i. And as you normally would, just be careful you're clear that the 47 is the only thing inside the square root here. Okay, so in the review here, we've covered Argan diagram, modulus argument form of a complex number, and the fact that we can solve equations giving us the same number of solutions as the order of the polynomial, here too, and we've got a complex conjugate pair coming out of this. What we're going to do in FP2, we're going to take this a little bit further, we're going to look at exponential form of a complex number, which comes out of considering the modulus argument form. We'll multiply and divide complex numbers in that form. Then we'll look at something called de Moivre's theorem, which is a really useful theorem. And we've got lots of things to look at in that. We've got the proof itself, as well as trigonometric identities. And that also links in with this last one, which is finding the nth roots of a complex number. So there's quite a bit. Most of it revolves around de Moivre's theorem, so let's get stuck into this chapter. The modulus argument form that we looked at in the starter 
can be further manipulated to write the number in exponential form. Now to do this, we need a chunk of work that we have not yet done from chapter seven. Now don't panic, we're not going to go through all of this. You'll find where it comes from when you get to chapter seven, but we just need to say here that these infinite series expansions for e to the x is this, for sine theta is this, cosine theta is this, and if you use x equals i theta and you write that out, you find that you can use sine theta and cosine theta on this side to replace all of this. Because all of this, when x equals i theta, gives you a combination of this and this. That's as far as I'll go into the background. You'll have to wait until chapter 7 if you really want to know where this all comes from. Putting those together, the key thing was if x equals i theta in the series expansion for e to the x, that can be rewritten in terms of cos theta and sine theta to give this relationship here. And this is called Euler's relation after a mathematician, Euler. As a very quick aside, this is where we get Euler's identity from, which is a very well-known equation. It's considered very beautiful. If you put theta equals pi in here, you get e to the i pi, and then cos of pi is minus one, bring that on the other side, sine of pi is zero, and you get this thing e to the i pi plus one equals zero. And it's considered very beautiful because it connects five of the fundamental constants of mathematics in such a simple little equation. You don't need to know that, but it's a little aside that comes out of Euler's relation, and it's very well known. What you do need to know is how this connects with exponential form, and it connects through the modulus argument form of a complex number. This bit you should recognize as the bracket in the modulus argument form, and we just replace that bracket with e to the i theta. So we get this as our exponential form of a complex number, where r is still the modulus, same modulus here, and theta is still the argument, same as the argument here. So we've got the same information for both of these formats, but this is the modulus argument form, and this is the exponential form. It's quite easy to change between these two forms because it's the same information, but you also need to be able to change both of these into x plus yi form, or vice versa. So let's have a look at a few examples of that. Express in the form r e to the i theta, where theta is going to be the principal argument, these four things here. So the first one's really easy because we can see its modulus argument form, r is this, theta is this, we just write it in this format. So we can go straight away from that to root three, e to the i pi over five. The second one is almost as easy, but you've got to be very careful if there's a minus here. Euler's relation does not have a minus, it has a plus. So we need to be able to manipulate this minus away somehow. And the way we do that is by remembering some of our GCSE work that the cosine of minus theta is the same as the cosine of theta because of the symmetry in the graph. And the sine of minus theta is not the same as sine theta, it's minus sine of theta. Why this is useful is because we can go backwards. We have a minus sine theta here, we can change that into sine minus theta. We don't have a minus cosine theta, but that's okay because cosine theta, we can just change that into cosine minus theta whenever we like. So we need to do both of these because we need the argument still to be the same in the sine and the cosine which means we can rewrite this as four cosine minus pi by six. And we do that just to keep the arguments the same because we need to do it in order to satisfy the plus in Euler's relation. So this is a minus pi by six in the sine in order to get the plus here. And a consequence of doing that is we need to change this as well to make sure the arguments are still the same. This now can be written in exponential form. The modulus is still four, e to the i theta. So we've got minus 
pi by 6. For our next two examples, they are in x plus yi form, which means we will need to find the modulus and the argument just as if we were converting it into the modulus argument form, but instead of writing it in this way, we'll write it in this way. But most of the work is the same here. So let's quickly sketch out an argand diagram. We've got 3 minus 4i is down here somewhere. And the modulus of that 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted is a 5, and the argument is here. Don't forget, because it's going clockwise, that will be a negative. Which is equal to negative 0 0.927 to three decimal places. Now we've got our information. We can say that z is equal to 5 times e to the i theta minus 0 0.927 i. Do the same thing with part d, except now we're on minus 2 and 3, so we're up here somewhere. And the argument here will work out as usual by first finding alpha here. The modulus first, square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared is square root of 13. Argument is equal to pi minus the inverse tan of 3 over 2. Put all that on your calculator and you should get 2.159 to three decimal places again. So z is equal to root 13 e to the 2.159i. So here we've got examples converting into exponential form. Next we're going to do some examples converting from exponential form. So the next example is taking the exponential form and putting it back into x plus iy and modulus argument form. Now to do this I would normally do the modulus argument form first because that converts very easily into this and the exponential gives me r and theta to write a modulus argument form straight away. So I would do modulus argument first which gives us root 3 cosine of theta and we can see what theta is in here because we know this is i theta so if we ignore the i for a second theta is 2 pi over 3. So we've got 2 pi over 3 plus i sine the same, 2 pi over 3. So for modulus argument form, that's quite straightforward. Now from here into x plus i y form is also quite straightforward because we just go ahead and expand this and put it on our calculator. So we've got root 3 cosine 2 pi by 3, which gives us a minus root 3 over 2 for the real part and then we've got root 3 times sine 2 pi over 3 for the imaginary part and in this case that is 3 over 2 i. The second one is a little bit different because when you put something in modulus argument form normally we use the principal argument here between minus pi and pi and this theta is not between minus pi and pi so just beware of that and whether or not you need it to be the principal argument. Here I will make it the principal argument. So we've got 4 for the modulus, cosine 11 pi over 5, plus i sine 11 pi over 5, and then to change that into the principal argument, you just subtract 2 pi until it's in your range, or you add 2 pi until it's in your range. So if we subtract 2 pi from that, get cosine pi by 5 plus i sine pi by 5. And that would be a more common way of seeing it in modulus argument form because the argument is now the principal argument. And of course we can do the same thing as we did over here. We just expand this out, put it on a calculator, and see what this is in x plus i y form. This is not a very nice number, it's 3.236 and I've rounded that to three decimal places, plus 2.351, also rounded to three decimal places, i. So let me put 3dp on the end there, just to make that clear. So that's converting from one form into another, into another. Finally, we've got an example here, just to show a little relationship, and this gives you just a little taster of how useful this relation is. We can show that this is true by looking at the two bits in here, 
e to the i theta we know is equal to this and e to the minus i theta I can put that in and see what we get so e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta and e to the minus i theta the i is still i obviously so that minus is part of the argument gives me cosine of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta then we use that knowledge that we had on a previous slide about cosine minus theta being the same as cosine theta and sine of minus theta being the same as minus sine of theta to write this then I can put these two together e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta plus cosine theta minus i sine theta and you can see we're just about there these two cancel out and the other two combine to give two cosine theta so when we divide everything by two write cosine theta on the left we have the relationship we need like so we'll do a lot on trigonometric identities as we get to de Moivre's theorem but for now that should be enough for you to have a go at some of the questions in exercise 3a and maybe i'll see you for dividing and multiplying in the next video